Shalom and welcome to Challenging Torah, a project for the Malibu Jewish Center and Synagogue. Our portion begins, V'yeshev Yaakov be'eretz megurei aviv be'eretz ka'anan. And now Jacob was settled in the land where his father had sojourned, in the land of Canaan. Settled, Yeshev, the wrestling match is over. Jacob sought to settle in peace, and thereupon leapt upon him the agitation of Yosef, so says Rashi. In fact, Rashi says, the righteous seek peace and to settle in peace in this world, and God says, is it not enough for the righteous that they will have peace in the world to come, that they need to settle in peace in this world? In other words, forget it. Totally forget about it, as we say. To settle in peace, it's all a dynamic, and just because the wrestling moment has a reached a moment of stasis doesn't mean that the journey or the struggle is over. And so as soon as Jacob arrives and, quote, settles, the first thing that happens is his daughter Dina is raped and his sons behave abominably by circumcising and then killing the neighbor's children not a good way to enter. And his wife, Rachel, the most beloved, dies. And as we soon shall see, we have the stories of Joseph. And the agitation of Joseph, the Midrash says, leapt upon him. So as we look for Leshev, what we also call Yeshuv Adat, a settlement, we realize that we can only settle in the cards we've been dealt, in the world of challenges that we deal with daily. There is no, now the game is over. Retirement? That's usually when we face the challenges of aging, kids' challenges, you name it. And it's very hard for us to understand that we may be in not the end of our story, but the middle of a story, because we don't even know the plot. And so we get to the plot of Joseph. Now, Joseph really uh, sets himself up in our Musar, our looking at our Midot, our qualities. We talk about Shmirat Lashon, knowing when to keep your mouth shut. Joseph, narcissistic, 17, gorgeous, his hair a little bit too done. I can see the eyes now. Joseph has no clue about what to say and what not to say. So, of course, first of all, he carries uh, bad reports to his father. He is the tattletale, and no wonder the brothers hate him. You have to know when to keep your mouth shut. And then, of course, he has his dreams. And these are not the dreams of his father, Jacob. These are not the dreams of God appeared to me in this dream and guided me. No, no, this is a young man's dream about how great he's going to be. And not only does he have that dream, you know, if we had that dream, we'd be quiet about it. Joseph needs to tell everyone, including his parents. So it is a very um, unsettling moment. And the story, we know, will take a very bad turn. Joseph's brothers will see him coming in his gorgeous kutonet pasim, his striped coat that sets him apart from everyone else, because, of course, his father plays right into an earlier pattern, which is, oh, there's a favorite child. The favorite child this time is, as it says, and Joseph, Joseph was the child of his old age, and he favored him. Bad idea in front of the other brothers, and they can't wait to get rid of him and they plot, and they think that they're going to kill him, and then they'll throw him in a pit, but Reuben saves it, as does Judah, and in the end he's sold, we know, to the Midianites, or is it the Ishmaelites, it depends on who's reading what, and we realize that the story has moved forward into a story of exile and redemption that is totally out of the hands of Joseph, his brothers, or Jacob. When we look at this in the light of our Musar training, our training of our own inner qualities. There are two this week. One is watch your tongue, but the other is savlanut, patience. And savlanut in Musar terms is not only patience, but the ability 
lisbol, savel, means literally to have forbearance. And Jacob, we see, spends the next 20 years being patient without really knowing the end of a story. For the brothers say, they took Joseph's tunic and slaughtered a kid and dipped the tunic in blood. And then they say, excuse me, we found this. Would you please examine it, they say to their father. Is this Joseph's tunic or not dipped in goat's blood? And Joseph is, is presented as this goat's blood tunic. And his father says, Tarof taraf et bni et Joseph. A wild beast has pulled him apart. I will now go down in mourning to hell, to Sheol. I'm just going to sit here for the next years. Well, we don't know what the next 20 years will be. And the characters in the story, Joseph, Jacob, the brothers, each have their own Bechira points, moments of choice, Sometimes Joseph chooses the right thing. He runs away from Mrs. Potiphar, who's grabbing that beautiful kutonet pasim striped coat. But ultimately, there's a plot. And the plot? The plot is God's. And we don't know the plot. The challenge of life is that we are in the middle of our story, and we don't know whether it's the middle, the end, the beginning. We don't know the timing. And so we are told, all the way back in Exodus, I'm sorry, in Genesis, that you will live in a land not yours for 400 years and be in exile. That's what God says to Abraham. When do you start the story? When does the 400 start? Has Jacob been given time off for good behavior? We don't know any of this as the story goes forward. We pretty much don't know anything about our own lives either, do we? This is truly challenging, Torah. Patience. Shabbat Shalom.